Hi Cornerstone Kids, welcome back to our new study on Genesis that stands for beginning and if you remember Genesis is in the beginning of our Bible and since we're at the beginning of 2021 I thought it was a good place to start and some things for us to learn um, from Genesis and maybe some of the things are going to be new and some you've heard before but I hope last week it was a good reminder or maybe new information about how God created the world. Now, I have a review here, and hopefully in, in your Genesis book that we started last week, hopefully you have page number one um, with the six days of creation. You can watch last week's video if you didn't get, um, get that done, because we started with Genesis chapter one, and we're gonna be in Genesis chapter two and three this week, and adding a new page to our book. Um, about, you'll find out what happened next in Genesis. And so we have each day of creation and God created, if we remember, he created the world to show himself to us. He wanted us to see him when we look at the sunset or when we look at those huge trees or that like perfectly made flower or those animals that bring us so much joy, he wanted us to see him, to look at him, to say, thank you, God, you're so good to me. Thank you, God, this, this sunset is so beautiful. So I hope this week when you saw some beautiful things in nature or some people that just really um, made your week better or some animals that just made you laugh or made you feel like loved and warm. Hopefully you said thank you to God because that's why he did this. That's why he did this for you and for me. And now we're gonna go on to chapter two. If you remember um, in Genesis chapter one, on the last day, God made animals and humans. and he created man and he gave him the name Adam. And so if you've heard before of Adam and Eve, Adam was the first human that God created and Eve was the second. All right, so God made Adam and Eve. And I wanna to read to you what he said to Adam. The Lord God had planted a garden in the east. It was in Eden like the, the city or the area. There he put the man he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground. Their fruit was pleasing to look at and good to eat. The tree that gives life forever was in the middle of the garden. The tree that gives the ability to tell the difference between good and evil was also there. There was a river. There was like, it was perfect. There was there was water for Adam, there were animals, there was food, it was beautiful. Everything was perfectly made by God. There was nothing bad. There was no, no being scared, no, no sickness, no diseases, no, um, no fear about what was gonna happen. It was like 100% good. And he said, when he looked at Adam, he said, the Lord God said, this is, if you're looking in your Bible, this is chapter two and it's verse 18. The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper who is just right for him. And the, then God made, um, let me look at 22. Then the Lord God made a woman. He made her from the rib he had taken out of the man and he brought her to him. So now, not only did he have like fun animals and he had food and beautiful plants and trees, he also had like a partner, okay? He had a friend and a partner. He had Eve with him now. And so everything, all of their needs were taken care of. And I wanna show you um, today's story. This is, um, this is a kid's Bible, so it doesn't have all of the details that you um, might have in the complete Bible, but it also has some pictures, so it helps. 
um, maybe understand it better. So um, I'm going to read it to you from, this is um, from Genesis chapter 3. So this is what happened next. God had Adam, he had Eve, they were in a beautiful, perfect garden. Now, many trees grew in the Garden of Eden. God told Adam and Eve, you may eat the fruit from any tree except for one. Never eat the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Okay, so they could eat the fruit from any of the trees. They were like free to eat any of that fruit. Now there was a sneaky snake in the garden. One day the snake saw Eve near the special tree. It hissed, did God really tell you not to eat the fruit from this tree? Hmm. Now Eve's like, hmm, I wonder. The snake wanted Eve to disobey God and said, you should try some of this tasty fruit. If you eat it, you will be like God. You will be able to tell the difference between good and evil. You should try some, Eve. The fruit looked tasty. Eve remembered what God had said, but she ate the fruit anyway. Then Eve gave some to Adam. He took a bite too. So now both of them did what God told them not to do. As the sun was going down, Adam and Eve heard God walking through the garden. He was looking for them. Adam and Eve hid among the trees. They were afraid. What have you done, God asked. Did you eat the fruit from the forbidden tree? Adam said, yes, but Eve gave it to me. Eve said, yes, but the snake, it tricked me. God told the snake, because of what you did, you will always crawl on your belly. Then he told Adam and Eve, because you disobeyed me, you can no longer live in the garden. Adam and Eve left the garden, and God placed angels and a flaming sword to guard the entrance. Adam and Eve would not be allowed in the garden again. So they had this um, Eve first and then Adam. Eve had this decision to make. Does she obey God or does she listen to the snake? Because the snake was like, are you sure that's what God said? And then the snake was also like, oh, I bet that God said that. And he tried to explain it his way. Now, Eve made the decision to go with the snake instead of obeying what she knew God said. And she, because of that, um, they started feeling a, um, fear. They feared when God came back. They were like ashamed, like embarrassed about not having clothes on where before it didn't bother them. But now they had these, these bad feelings, the ones you and I know about. You know about that feeling of being embarrassed, right? Or being afraid that after you've done something wrong, someone's gonna find out. Yeah, we've had that feeling, right? Now, this is when those feelings first came into the life of humans, because that wasn't God's plan. God didn't plan for you and me to have fear or to be embarrassed or to, to like run away from him. That wasn't his plan. Even this like blaming, the way they're blaming each other. No, it was Eve told me to do it. And then Eve said, yes, but the serpent, he told me to do it. And those things, those like negative things that now make our life harder, you know, like you get blamed for things, you feel afraid, you feel embarrassed. Those things started with Adam and Eve. Right? If, if Eve would have said, no, I, I'm not going to do it, or if Adam would have said, nope, I'm not going to eat that fruit, I'm going to obey God, nobody else, then maybe we could have kept that sin out of our world. But now it's here, right? Now you and me, we do bad things for sure. You could see a brand new baby, 100% chance that they're going to do something wrong that disobeys God. That's the way it goes. We, we, don't have, um, we don't have a choice to be perfect. 
we all sin. The Bible says we're all going to sin in our life. Nobody's going to be perfect in what they do and what they say. And so that's why now, now we need Jesus. That's why Jesus died on the cross. That's why we have this, we, we know about Jesus coming. Because now we can, the only way to get rid of those bad things is by believing in Jesus by having Jesus in our heart. And thank, thankfully, he died on the cross so that all of our bad things could go away. But they all started when with Adam and Eve. And that serpent, I have one here hanging, so we don't forget him, all right? We're gonna make one of these today um, to put in our book. But this, this, the serpent, Adam, Eve, they made the wrong choice. And we do too. And we do get to be forgiven, but we still have to deal with some of those bad feelings and some sometimes being treated bad by other people. Because when, um, even though God made the world perfect, humans kind of messed it up, right? We kind of mess things up that God wants to be different. And that's what Adam and Eve did. And um, um, and that is, that is the story of their sin in chapter 3. And you can't stop there, otherwise you'll feel really discouraged. But there's such good news coming up in our Bible about, um, about Jesus and about Jesus making everything right again. And that's what we can be hopeful for and look forward to. Now... I want us to pray uh, before we do today's um, page in our book. And so I want you to fold your hands so they're not playing with anything. Close your eyes so no one distracts you. Jesus, thank you that you came, you died on the cross, and you took away our bad things. You took away the bad things that we do and say, and you'll do the same thing tomorrow and next week when we do something wrong. And we just thank you that you always forgive us. And Lord God, I just thank you for, um, for your creation of humans. We thank you for all of the good people that we have in our life. And we thank you for the family you've given us. Thank you for friends you've given us, for church friends, for school friends, for our neighbors. Thank you for people and that they make our life so good and so joyful. We love you. We thank you that you love us no matter what. In Jesus' name, amen. And he does love us no matter what. No matter what we do because we're going to do the wrong thing for sure. And he still loves us. Now, um, in, for today's um for today's book, you're going to need another piece of paper, and it could be um, regular size, um, like this. It should be the same size as your book. So if you used this size last week, get another piece to use for this week. So you want all your pages to be the same size. You're going to need um, uh, 10 total, because we're going to do 10 weeks of Genesis. If you used a large piece, a uh, larger piece like I did, stick with the larger paper. So you want it to be the same size as last week. You're going to um, fold it in half. Fold it in half just like this to fit inside your book. Okay. And sit that page aside. Get one paper to make a snake out of, okay? And um, this snake can be any color um, that you want it to be. Probably, um, yeah, it doesn't matter. It can be white. It can be whatever color. And you want to kind of, let's kind of make a, it doesn't have to be like a perfect circle, um, but kind of make a circle out of your paper, okay? Definitely, mine is more like an oval, that's fine. If, you're, if you want to trace something and make a perfect circle, that's fine too. But we're going to use this um, paper to make 
a snake like this one, okay? The sneaky serpent. And the way that we're gonna do it is we're gonna cut it in sort of a spiral. So just start on the edge and you're going to just cut a spiral just like you would um, just like you would draw one. You can you know you don't want to go off the edge. You want to just keep cutting in a spiral um, circle so that your snake is long and curly. Okay. Keep going until your paper is gone, until you come to like uh, the center and we'll draw the head there. Like, I think I'll stop right there. And I'll draw some eyes on my And so the paper is all um, spiraled out, okay? I also um, uh, drew a pattern on my snake. I'll let you see it uh, closer up. If you want to go through and draw, um, color a pattern on yours, that's fine. I did just like some stripes and um, red and black stripes up and down my and um, his little face at the top so you can decorate your serpent if you want. And we're gonna try to keep all of our um, work from Genesis inside a book, okay? So take that first paper that you folded in half and put glue only on the top half. Now let me show you before you do yours, because once it's glued, then it's hard to get unglued if you made a mistake. Okay, so I folded, I folded a paper, I folded a paper in half, and I'm putting glue only on one side, and I'm going to attach it, this was my page from last week, I'm going to attach it to the back of last week's page. Let me lay it down so I can do it a little more easily. So here you, I attached today's paper only to the back of last week. So we have creation, and then when you open it up to the next page, I put my snake inside of there. Glue your snake on um, today's page. I also put, I put a tree to represent the sin and eating the fruit off of the tree. Um, if you wanna do something different up top, you can, but put your um, spiral snake there at the bottom. And make sure you put also Genesis 2 and 3, because today's story about, um, I called it the big sin, all right, is in Genesis 2 and 3. And there's, you can remember it from the snake and the tree, the fruit that they ate when they weren't supposed to. Um, so leave the bottom open, like don't glue it down, because we're going to add page 3 onto the back next week okay so these two pages um, page number one with creation and page number two with your snake are attached together so when you when you have your genesis book you'll open it up and you see your creation page and then the next page will be your snake page and next week will be you'll have to wait and see it'll be a surprise see you next week cornerstone kids